space to a showcase of some of Nottingham's finest up-and-coming musical talent. That's right, Nottingham is a thriving music scene and we have four of the bands for you here today. Absolutely. So everyone that you see performing and everyone that's worked on this show as a whole all study currently at Confetti Institute of Creative Technologies. Without further ado, Charlotte Moon with the song Winter. So that was Charlotte Moon with her original track, Winter, and wasn't it just beautiful? We've got more of that on the way, but for now, I've got something else beautiful for you. It's Ada Blue with Ice Cream Kisses. <laughs> Come to, and I don't know who I am. 
Hi Charlotte. Hi. Lovely to meet you. You too. Great song, Winter. You Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the song Winter? Yeah, so I'm Charlotte Moon um, and Winter's about that period um, where you find like all these new relationships popping up when it gets cold yeah. and then reminiscing about past relationships. Awesome. That kind of thing. <laughs> great, great, great. I really wanted to get into the songwriting thing, but can you tell us a little bit about your influences and because it's got that really nice feel to it, that old school feel yeah. to it, yeah. Um, I've always listened to Fleetwood Mac, I grew up with it. Um, it was always in the car or blasting through the house. Um, so I take a lot of inspiration from Fleetwood Mac's writing. Great, good stuff as well, man. Um, can you tell us where we can find you soon or if you're going to be performing or if yeah. you've got social media or anything like that? Um, well, on social media, it's just Charlotte Moon. Um, on everything, Facebook, Instagram. Awesome. Make some noise for Charlotte Moon people. So, Ada Blue, thank you for gracing us with your lovely tune, uh, Ice Cream Kisses. Where does a song like that get birthed? Because it was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, at the time when I was writing it, I was listening to a lot of Nirvana and took quite a lot of inspiration from their work and stuff and how I was feeling. So it's all about just not fitting in in the world and stuff. Interesting, because Nirvana has quite a rough sound, yeah. right? So you've taken that rough sound and made it really quite ethereal. How have you done that? How does the songwriting process begin for you? Well, it's just taking the influence, so like the chords and stuff and that kind of style, and transposing it onto an instrument like an acoustic guitar yeah. and adding some finger picking over the top to make it a little bit less grungy and yeah. harsh. Yeah, it was beautiful, <laughs> honestly. Really good tune, proper groove to it as well. Um, especially with the backing track, with the drums and everything. Did you make that yourself as well? I did, yeah. All done by me. She's an all-rounder. She produces, she does a songwriting. Watch out for Ada Blue. But for now, guys, we're going to cut to an ad break and we're going to hear some more from Ada Blue. We're going to hear some more from Charlotte Moon and then later we'll be hearing from Ellie Stainsby and Love on the Crash. It was really good fun watching the studio being set up during the day. The live tech students were really professional and helpful during the sound checks. It just felt like a really close space, which I quite liked. So, not like in a live performance setting where everyone's moving about and stuff, it just felt really close and relaxed, almost. Stairs. You'll never stand with the smokers 
Francis. Come join us, Charlotte. Give him a round of applause. Come on, Let's give it up. Let's give, let's give it up. That's beautiful. Thank you. Great song. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, um, that was one I wrote a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and um, it was actually about when I was in a relationship with someone who hated drinking and smoking <laughs> and all of that. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of based around that. So yeah. even the little list of things you can mix on. Amazing. Well, I don't drink or smoke, so that's <laughs> totally relate to that song. Absolutely. Also, I wanted to quiz you on your songwriting because it's really Boy. mature and... You know, it's got a really good groove to it. The band's amazing and you all gel really well together. So tell us about the songwriting and the production process that you go through. Um, so I take the songs to the band and they're brilliant. So they'll just come in and start playing. And it's as easy as that. It's great. Amazing. amazing. Give it up for Charlotte Moon, people. Okay, so now I've got some more Ada Blue for you. She's going to be singing her song, Learn to Fly. Come over for interview round two, Ada. All right, so, learn to fly. Yeah. Second tune of the evening or of the day. Depends what time of the day you guys are watching it. Um, where did that song come from then, learn to fly? It's inspired by like growing up and stuff and kind of realising things about the world that you wouldn't really take notice of when you were younger and stuff and kind of getting through that. 
Okay, so like what specifically? Like existential crisis and stuff like that. That kind of vibe. Okay, deep. <laughs> We're getting deep. So learn to fly, quite literally, spreading your wings yeah. and learning how to kind of deal with life. Yeah, pretty okay. much. Okay, fair enough. Deep, I like it. Okay, so we've had ice cream kisses, we've got learn to fly, really strong bodies of work. Are we going to get a little bit of a release anytime soon? On the 3rd of March, I've got my EP release in, oh, which is oh, entitled oh. Ice Cream Kisses. Okay. So, yeah, that will be on all streaming platforms, so please go and stream it. So, Ice Cream Kisses, the EP, is it's coming, 3rd of March? Yes, it is. Brilliant. Okay, so Spotify, the lot. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, okay, so let's just backtrack a little bit then. So, where did you find your love for music? Where does that come from? Well, I've always loved music, to be honest. Like, ever since I was young, like, just, it's helped me through a lot, it helped me well, it helps me deal with a lot in life and stuff. So, yeah. Okay, so I've heard, and when we've spoken before, mm. that you've kind of got a bit of a musical theatre background, right? Does that, I do. does that influence your songwriting? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it more comes off in like my performance and delivery of songs and stuff, so I like sure. to be quite expressive when I do sing stuff. But in the writing aspect, I like to tell a story which can come from the musical theatre background, I guess. Beautiful. Well, it's been lovely hearing from Thank you. you. And now, guys, we're going to cut to another ad break. Um, tune in for part three, where we'll be hearing from Love is on the Crash and Ellie Stainsby. The band were really happy with the sound and our performances. It was nice to be able to watch and listen to other artists performing, who I thought were amazing. I think it was quite daunting at first, having like loads of cameras around, but um, yeah, it was helpful because I got asked to do another one of pretty much the same thing a few, like a week afterwards and I knew what I was doing. So it was really helpful to be able to do that. I think that's a brilliant platform to showcase the talent in and around Nottingham, especially from Confetti, where there's lots of bands and musicians studying on the music courses at FE and HE. It was a really cool thing to do. I would love to do another TV show performance. It was really interesting watching all the camera and sound crews at work and getting to know how to play to the cameras instead of a crowd of people. I thought the performances went really well. I had loads of fun during the day and would definitely recommend it to any bands and artists wanting to get TV exposure and experience. It was a very busy day, but everyone was relaxed and enjoyed it. I would definitely do it again and would really like to do more TV studio performances. There was always something happening and I learned a lot about working in a TV studio environment. Don't mind if I'm my 
So, Ellie Stainsby, hello. Hello. Hello, I'm, it's such an honour to be able to interview <laughs> you. Um, so that tune, Silence No Sound. Yes. I think it was very aptly named because you silenced the room Thank just you. then. What a voice, what songwriting talent you have. How did you create that? Um, How does that happen? So I, lyric wise, I usually write lyrics first okay. and then I come up with stuff based on that. But I actually wrote the piano first and it was when I was recording a video at Sherwood Phoenix and it just kind of popped into my head and it went from there. And okay. So the riff on the piano came first this yeah. time. So that's an unusual process for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm usually lyrics first. Lovely, it's a lovely riff that you've got going on there. Um, do you have any movement with that song? Because I'll let you in on a little secret. I've heard that song play before and it's always in my head when I'm at home, I'll be like washing the dishes, singing, silence, no sound. And I'm not even lying, it's beautiful. So is there a future for that song? Um, so I'll let you in on a secret. Going to record we're, we're it. We're revealing so many we're secrets. Revealing today. so many secrets. Um, so next Sunday, I'll hopefully be recording this song, and it hasn't got an official release date yet, but it will be soon, and it will be on my social medias. Okay, nice. So I'm going to be able to listen to that at home instead of sing along oh, in my yeah. own head. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so moving on from that, we're going to be hearing kind of more from you in a bit, but now I'm going to hand over to Steve, where he's going to be talking to Love Is on the Crash. Love is on the crash. How you doing, fellas? Good, You're right, guys? Yeah. 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 Can we tell us who we've got here? Yes, uh, I'm Riley. I play uh, guitar and lead vocals. Uh, I'm Toby. I play the drums. I'm Shiloh. I play bass. And I'm Felicity. I do rhythm guitar. Wicked. Now, the name Love is on the crash. Love is on the crash? Yes. <laughs> Where does that come from? Well, it's, it's, it's not really where you think. It was, uh, it was one time in rehearsals we were trying to to recreate the song uh, She Loves You by the Beatles, but nobody else knew when to come in, like after the drum fill. That comes on the word loves. So I was like, okay, love is on the crash. When I, when, when I, pressed the, when I hit the crash yeah. in that song, that's when you come in, so love Wicked. is on the crash. Wicked, I never would have thought, you know what I mean? That's like, <laughs> it's out there, isn't it? That, that, I love it, I love the title. Can you tell us a bit about how you guys came together? Because just in the rehearsal stages, you were doing this like, dead jazzy groovy thing <laughs> yeah. doom, 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 doom. and I was like yo this is bad these guys are serious you know what I mean can you tell us a bit about how you all came together September was it yeah, yeah. when yeah. we first got together and as soon as we got in the room we just sort of clicked like started writing original music didn't really bother with too many covers so mm. Awesome. So it's all original music. Yeah. Love yeah. it, love it. And is there anywhere where we can come and see you soon is there a social media <laughs> that we can find you on have you got any releases anything like that happening um, funnily enough, we're, go we're going to be performing at Rough Trade soon, uh, kind of early February, there's one of the showcases, but um, hopefully at some point soon we should be making an album, hopefully, as a team, and maybe that should be on. And that's going to be independent, yeah? That's mm. independently done. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. So the songwriting process and the music is a group collective thing, is it? Is it something that you all do together? Yeah, the definitely. The words and the, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the instrumentation of it all. Brilliant. I think we should just... Big em up, big, big up, massive, big up, fat lovers on the crash. It's quite a strange experience to begin with, not being used to all the cameras and directors and all the sound guys and everything. But once we get sort of settled down in there, it's, it's quite a fun sort of experience. We were quite nervous to start off with, but once we sort of relaxed and we knew we had to be calm because there's only so many takes you do in one day. Yeah, it, it went really well in the end. We'd definitely do it again. Definitely recommend other people to do it. Once you get to be a part of it, it's quite fun. The people working the lights and the sound and stuff are really kind of good at communicating. We went back and we said, is there any way of kind of customising what colours we want? They were very open to discussing and showing which colours and different lights worked best. I enjoyed the interview part. I felt a lot more relaxed because I had it with Holly, who obviously has been teaching me for the past year and I find her very easy to talk with. And then kind of setting all the cameras up, getting the angles and practicing the transitions in between. And then the actual recording was a lot less stressful because of these, I'd say. Um, and I really loved it. And I genuinely can't wait to see the final thing.
love your shoes. Why? What do you want? I really like your shoes. That brings us to the end of our first 
episode of Space 2 and what a strong episode it's been. Absolutely. Be sure to follow these guys on social media. Keep your eye on the up and coming gigs that they've got coming out. Support the Nottingham talent. Yeah, absolutely. Nottingham's got a really strong music scene, so you've got to be tapping into that goodness. Today we've had we've had Ellie Stainsby, we've had Love Is On The Crash, we've had Ada Blue and we've had Charlotte Moon, so be sure to check those guys out. They've got music coming to your ears soon. But without further ado, we must say goodbye on Space 2. And we'll see you next time. My name is Chris Rogers. I am a tutor on the TV and film course at Confetti Institute of Creative Technologies. We've just finished filming a brand new music show called Space 2, which is a TV music show. It's been a big collaboration between lots of different courses at Confetti. So we've had live tech events doing all the lighting, the stage, all the sound. We've had uh, TV and film students doing all the filming and the sound recording of all the, the interviews and the dialogue. In the background, we've got HE students doing the opening title sequence of music, graphics being designed by the graphics course. So we've got a whole load of people from all different courses involved. Of course, we've got all the musicians. They are from the FE music course and they have been absolutely fantastic, really high standard. The intention was that it was always going to be managed by the students themselves. We create the platform, we create the opportunity, and then they basically run and make the show themselves. It's handing over all of the responsibilities and all the creative decisions really are going to be with the students. We've had loads of support uh, from the sort of top down to do this. We're doing it in this fantastic facility, which is one of the uh, TV studios that we've got available at Confetti. It's been, you know, as a professional production would be if you went to you know, any TV studio. It just seems like a fantastic opportunity to highlight the skills that are being taught and the sort of talent that is at Confetti as well trying to cement the professional uh, industry standards that we teach. Might even get some breakout artists um, and let's hope so. My name is Caitlin Riley and my role in the Space 2 production was the assistant director for Stage 1. I had to work with all the different crews in the studio including the camera, the audio crew and the artists. My jobs were to tell them when we were going to record and make sure they knew what was going on. At the start of every take, I had to use the clapperboard to sync the audio to all the different cameras we were using at the time. What I liked about the production was how professional it all was, and it was kind yeah. of a step up from our college projects. I'd definitely do it again if I was given the opportunity to. My name's Harley Cummings. I was sound supervisor during the production of Space 2. This role entailed me making sure everyone in the sound crew knew what they were doing. Um, we had four people on the day. We had different setups, including an X and Y setup. This allowed us to get Atmos as well as sound from the audience, including them clapping, laughing, etc. We also had lapel mics. Uh, they were set up for the presenters as well as the actual acts themselves. And then also for the interviews, we had to make sure all the levels were set independently based on everyone, based on their tone of voice, we'll change it make sure everything sounds as crisp as it needs to. Welcome to Space 2. Would I do a Space 2 production again? 100%. I loved it, all the responsibilities it entailed. Honestly, I just love working with the crew. It was great fun, definitely. My name's James. I'm on the Live and Tech Events course. I've really enjoyed working on the show and I'd really, really like to do it again. It sort of opened up a new path that I'd definitely like to consider going down and working on TV and doing lights for different shows. I think it would just be a really awesome thing to do. My name's Shea Burrows and I'm on the Live and Technical Events course. I'm the manager for the production team and that basically means I have to make sure all my engineers are operating their equipment safely, uh, correctly and basically all the lights look good for camera uh, and that all the audio sounds good and then we can ship that off to the mixers. My name's Lee Dean and I was the camera supervisor for the shoot which meant working with the TV and film camera crew to capture multiple different angles from positions of two different stages during the day. We had two track and dollies, a jib, a gimbal, um, we had two different stages at which multiple cameras were positioned to catch both of the stages. I'm hoping to go on to university and eventually become a successful filmmaker and editor. Would I want to make another episode of Space 2? 
definitely really enjoyed it loved the whole day i'd jump at the opportunity to do it again my name's eve hudson my role was the assistant director my job was to help manage the event and make sure everyone was in the right place at the right time during filming in the studio i had to make sure that everyone was ready and check that all the sound and cameras were ready to film and call for a take Hi, my name is Chris Highlands. Um, I was a second AD in the production. My job was to help out the first AD manage the participants and the tech crew. There was a lot of sitting around in the day, but that was while the tech crew was setting up and I helped them out a little bit. Um, but when we actually got to filming the production, I was there with my stop clock, kind of like keeping track of all the times and making sure that we didn't go like overboard with the duration. Oh, I'd 100% do it again. I had loads of fun. I, I like, yeah, yeah, it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Shot one.